need your strength. I need your power. Heal me, O oh Holy Spirit. Deliver me, O oh Holy Spirit. Give me the wisdom that sits on my throne. of the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, ESC. Our first reading is taken from the second book of the Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, and verse 9 to 14. Our responsorial psalm is from Psalm 16. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, and chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. The Gospel is according to St. Luke, chapter 20, verse 27 to 38. The theme of our homily is Resurrection of the Dead. Jesus' discussion with the Sadducees today pushes us to reflect on life year after. The Sadducees' real question was not about marriage, but about the resurrection doctrine. The Sadducees were the priestly aristocratic party in Jerusalem. They accepted only the first five books of the Old Testament as scripture. They followed only the letter of the law. They rejected the oral legal traditions and they were opposed to all teachings not found in the Pentateuch, such as the resurrection of the dead. The Sadducees' question on the law of levirate marriage can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5 to 10. This question ridicules resurrection and argues on the basis of the written law. That is what the Sadducees accept. They accept only the written law. Jesus therefore quoted again from the Pentateuch. He quoted Exodus chapter 3 verse 6 to prove life after death. God spoke of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob years after their deaths as if they were still alive. God's covenant with his people, therefore, goes beyond death. From the above discussion, we are encouraged today to reflect on the meaning of life and on the purpose of death. In life, death comes in many forms. Slow, sudden, touches the young and the old. It comes through accidents, it comes to prolonged illness. The path of life, therefore, leads necessarily to the grave. Death is therefore the one appointment we can never cancel. No sorrow can be compared to the heartbreak at the graveside. However, the Bible and the church's doctrine bring us a lot of consolation. The coming of Christ into the world has given new meaning to every departure and taken the sting out of death. As Christians, we believe that our human existence cannot adequately be explained in terms of this life only. Life does not end in the grave. Life begins on earth, but finds its completion somewhere year after, what we call death. Death is the doorway leading to eternal life. It is our leap into eternity with God who calls us to the fullness of life. In this month of November, we have the noble tradition of praying for the dead. 
In the creed we profess, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our first reading today, one of the seven sons of the Maccabees reminds us of the creed. In the face of death, he says, Ours is the better choice to meet death at men's hands, yet relying on God's promise that we shall be raised up by Him. Whereas for you, there can be no resurrection, no new life. Second book of the Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 14. We remember the dead not out of fear, not out of despair, but in hope of joining them in eternal life. The spirit of the dead lives on in the memory of the living. What life will be after the resurrection is beyond our understanding or beyond our imagination. The prophet Isaiah tells of the, the, the prophet Isaiah he talks of this in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 and we can also read about it in the first letter to the Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. However, we need not be afraid of eternal life because of the unknowns. Jesus' statement does not mean that people will not recognize their partners in the coming kingdom. It simply means that God's new order will not be an extension of this life and that the same physical and natural rules will apply. Instead of wondering what God's coming kingdom will be like, we should concentrate on our present relationship with Christ. Because in the new kingdom, we shall be with Christ. If we learn to love and to trust Christ now, we shall not be afraid of what he has in store for us then. The kingdom of God is for us. Let us live lives worthy of God's calling. Let us also pray for all the faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody.